Welcome and thanks for joining us. Agencies uh, have long attempted to modernize and update their human capital management systems for the 21st century. And yes, modernizing means agencies can spend less time on transactional work, but it also means they can spend more time planning what the workforce will need next year, five years from now and beyond. And as this last year has taught us all, Planning ahead isn't an easy task, especially when agencies have been asked to pivot quickly to respond to a global pandemic and many other tough challenges. So today we're gonna to hear how agencies are modernizing, what those upgrades mean for their workforce and how the last year has perhaps accelerated some of those plans or changed how they position their people to best tackle the mission. My guests today are Neil Singh. He's the Acting Executive Director for Human Capital Business Solutions at the Department of Homeland Security. We have Byron Atkins. He's the director of the Interior Business Center for the Interior Department. We have Tracy Demartini. She's the chief human capital officer at the General Services Administration. Tanisha Lewis is the HCM performance and business readiness manager for the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. And we have Wayne Bobby. He's the vice president for US federal government at Workday. So welcome to the panel here. And just to, to start things off, um, to the panelists, would like each of you to just set the scene for us. Describe the current state of your human capital management system today, maybe how technology fits into the way you manage your workforce, and maybe what's changed in the last year or so. And Neil, why don't we start with you? Good morning, Nicole. So uh, DHS has a variety of systems, uh, different ages, different technologies. As, as you may know, DHS is comprised of what we call 10 components, uh, the different agencies that were merged together to form DHS. And we, we leverage uh, a lot of federal shared service providers. So, you know, OPM for uh, the, the USA suite of tools, the staffing, jobs, hire, performance, et cetera. Also NFC for some of our time and attendance, retirement services and, and payroll processing. But we're also leveraging a lot of commercial SaaS as well as uh, platform technologies that are allowing us to deliver capabilities and modernize capabilities to deploy services quicker to our employees. So over the, the next few years and what we're focused on right now is business automation, as well as creating an employee portal uh, that will allow self-service, uh, which, which is something that really everyone needs. I think the government is probably a little further behind private industry. I do everything right now uh, directly on my phone, get access to whatever I need. Systems are very intuitive, and I think the government needs to, to catch up to private industry. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. And Neil, just to jump off of that, the uh, employee portal that you mentioned, what do you anticipate might go into that? And, and what are you hoping to get out of that? So uh, a lot of it's gonna be the self-service or what we're calling the tier zero support. We want employees to be able to go out and find information so they can get, and, and, and let me back up, not just employees, but their families. Uh, you know, our DHS environment, you know, a lot of our employees are out in the field. They don't have contact with uh, an office environment where they're able to quickly get on the computer. So their families a lot of times need access to the information that typically an employee would go to. So the employee portal and ultimately allow family members into that portal to go in and find the information that they need. Um, or if, if they can't get the information to be able to request the help from an HR representative and then also have transparency and be able to kind of track that request so they know where it is, which will improve our employee satisfaction and the experience. So Byron, let me uh, jump to you here. Interior Business Center, you obviously deal with a large variety of agencies providing payroll, other HR services. Um, how would you describe kind of the, the current state of your human capital management system today and, and what are you eyeing for the future here? Yeah, I, th I think we're very fortunate at the Department of Interior and certainly being a shared service provider um, with uh, several external customers, we are, in a position where we're able to provide end-to-end -end integration with our HR systems by way of our transactions. And so um, we've leveraged OPM U USA staffing to do um, uh, the entrance on duty. Um, that's all done electronically, um, which 
has been a, a huge help um, based upon what's occurred with the pandemic um, and folks working in a virtual environment. Um, but we're also very fortunate because our payroll and our HR uh, system are integrated. And so um, once you onboard, um, that's integrated within our payroll, um, our talent management and our performance management system is also integrated there. And so it is a one-stop shop, if you will. Um, once you come in, you're already set up um, for your performance management. And so that information is already in, it's all electronic um, from day one. Um, also from a talent management perspective and learning management, um, that information is already uploaded. So we know this is the required training that you need um, once you come into the Department uh, of Interior based upon what your job function is. And then finally, um, all this information is then forwarded into your electronic personnel file, our EOPF, um, which is all integrated. And so that saves a lot of time, um, eliminates a lot of duplication of effort, and that happens up front for the employee. And so that's a, a great um, uh, integration and tool that we have um, to have all of our HR systems integrated um, to make it a smooth onboarding process um, for any employee that comes on board and you're kind of getting it, getting it right from the start um, as it comes in. So you work out all the kinks up front um, and you're ready to get to roll once, once you start on day one. And so um, we're very fortunate with that and, and been, have over the years have been able to leverage um, technology um, to do that. It's also very helpful because uh, we represent employees across all across the country and, and um, geographically dispersed um, across the United States, Alaska, um, as well as Hawaii. My workforce is also across the, um, the country. And so we definitely need to be in a virtual posture um, to be able to communicate and support our customers and clients as well. And so um, we've been very fortunate to be able to use technology um, this human capital data, it, it also creates a lot of data that we can use um, to help with our budgeting and forecasting, but most importantly as a sure service provider um, to assist with our costing and pricing models as well, because we are fee for service. So uh, we use technology quite a bit. All right, can you maybe give me an example of how you are leveraging technology? Yeah, so um, one of the things that, that we've done um, quite frankly, that we're moving towards is looking at the data that we have from that's all been input there to look at where there's opportunities to use robotics process automation um, for highly manual processes, uh, um, things that we can allow our HR specialists um, not to do these manual things, but to really do the consultative um, and analytical work um, to help our customers with human capital planning. And so um, we're in the process of doing an assessment right now to look at where those highly manual functions are um, using robot um, bots and, and RPA uh, to be able to leverage that to allow um, the RPA or the bots to do those manual processes. And so um, that's an uh, example of, of where we're, we're going as an organization. And that's not just across our HR line of business, it's also within our financial management line of business as well, where we have um, eight bots already in production. And so this is a capability that we are looking to leverage. And, and moreover, it's something that our customers are asking for. Um, they really want to look at where there are opportunities to um, use uh, robotics process automation to um, uh, do some of these manual uh, uh, functions uh, that are currently being done by our federal employees. Tracy, let me bring you in here. Um, where do things sit today with your human capital management system and, and what are you looking forward uh, to in the future here? So we've been really fortunate. GSA is such a forward-leaning agency when it comes to the use of technology. A few years ago, we moved to a cloud-based system um, a product called HR Links, which integrated our personnel system and became very friendly in terms of the interface for the employees. So they could stop there, you know, do their time in attendance. They can download an SF50 if they need a recent copy. Their performance plans are in the system. Um, but I do want to piggyback on something Byron said, because while we're continuing to move forward and self-service is very important, because employees oftentimes just have a very quick answer and we wanna be able to give it to them, whether it be on their phone or on their laptop. Um, the bots issue has also come up at GSA and it would be great to start to use more robotic functionality to do the, um, the low, low touch work as many transactional items are. However, 
I always clarify and remind people that doesn't mean we should be shrinking our HR offices because as we move to more consultative business strategies and to be providing more high dollar, high value services, you really need a cadre of very well-trained, high-graded people to provide it. We're looking ahead right now with what we're calling the future of work as we come back from a pandemic. What is What that's gonna look like is so incredibly exciting for GSA, but also for the entire government but it has the opportunity to completely flip federal HR on its head, which means we need even more investments in people and in technology. So this is like the golden hour. I'm, I'm talking about it this way with my CIO, Dave Shive, where we have to capitalize it and really put forth the argument why we need stronger investments in HR, IT, why the systems need to talk to each other, and then also focusing on the high touch um, areas such as strategy, data analytics. Byron brought up some great examples of how the data can be used to inform future decisions, but it still is going to take a very well-trained, diverse group of HR specialists to move in this direction. Because back under hiring reform in 2010, 2011, and I'm sure my colleagues on the phone remember that, great initiative, but it doesn't happen overnight. Because as you move from a transactional to a strategic workforce, we not only have to upskill and retrain our employees, we have to really retrain our customers because they're used for HR doing everything for them and there will be some things they should be able to do themselves. One other opportunity we're looking at GSA is having more self-service for our hiring managers so they can track where their jobs are instead of saying, I think it's with HR, I can't remember, it might be with them. They can see in real time when the job closes, how many applications we're getting, when the hiring panel should begin. And even taking a step back from that, looking how we might infuse AI technology into our looking, looking at the applications and seeing which applications may be higher ranked. But again, you still need personnel in there to guide the process because the AI functionalities are only gonna be useful when you have really highly trained HR specialists training the computers what to do. So it is an evolution and this is now the time to do it, but it's going to take many resources. And, and I hope that there's an appetite there to give it to us. So Tracy, you brought up a, a ton of great points. Definitely want to get to that future work conversation that you brought up a little bit later in this discussion. And I, I'm glad you brought up the uh, conversation that, that I'm hearing as well about just more resources for HR, just because you're perhaps automating some of these services that people previously provided, you still need people around to do that strategic work. Um, so definitely great points. And I want to come back to those. Um, but I do quickly want to bring in Tanisha here. Um, what are you seeing from your end of things? And, and briefly, can you give us a, a quick, you know, maybe 36 second rundown of um, your organization and what you all do? Sure. Um, so the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority is responsible for managing the um, National Airport and Dallas Airport. The Silver Line construction, uh, which is the metro system that uh, takes uh, our passengers from the city out to Dallas Airport. And we're also um, partaking on a number of huge construction projects. So our organization is very much like a small city, very much uh, similar to a government. Um, we have over 1,700 employees that work here um, that make sure that the airports run smoothly and are safe for our passengers. Um, about uh, three years ago, we had the opportunity to implement a workday solution, which was very, very, um, it was an amazing process, which helped to move our organization from a very transactional um, process to more proactive, um, modernized HCM solution. And so we have um, now transitioned to a new system that allows us to have a self-service option for all of our employees, kind of similar to what Tracy um, was discussing earlier. It has truly moved our HCM um, team from that transactional team to more a business analytics team um, where they're more um, proactive rather than reactive. And so this has been an amazing process for us. And um, we're really proud to say that we've made that transition to um, to the cloud and software as a service um, as an organization. So it's been very good for us. So Wayne, I wanna bring you here in here at this point. Just tell us, I mean, what are you seeing with your customers in this space? Uh, what are some of the challenges they're dealing with and, and how are they uh, trying to resolve them? 
So it's interesting as I um, hear the, the comments from folks that are kind of on the front lines here, uh, leading these HCM efforts in their agencies. Um, you know, I heard a lot about, you know, being less transactional and being more informational, you know, more in self-service, that sort of thing. And I think that's what the demands are, you know, today. Um, years ago, when we all first started using technology, probably the best technology or the most advanced techno technology we had was in our jobs at work. Today, for all of us, probably the most advanced technology we have is we carry in our in our hand or in our purse, you know, um, which is you know our you know our mobile devices, you know, um, iPhones and 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 uh, and other devices that we use. And I think that that's where people really want to go. I mean, they want they want to they want to be informational. They want to know where things stand in terms of you know their jobs, their positions, and people want to know as a part of their HCM system that. Uh, I'm a part of an organization that's provided me a career, not just a job. And as a part of that career, you know, I was able to do everything through a, 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 a technology capability that enabled me to be onboarded as an employee and go through an application process that was very intuitive for me. Once I got on board, provided me benefits, you know, in a very self service oriented way that answer all the questions I would have for me and my family based on the situation that I may be in, gave me, you know, uh, a succession plan forward, an individual development plan as a part of learning efforts as a part of that career that I'm a part of, and then allowed me to get performance feedback from my manager as I went through the whole life cycle. And people want to do this in a simple, easy to use fashion, like I said, in terms of how they do things in their daily lives you know on their mo phones mobile devices or how they pay their bills with their bank online so all these things are in our in our, in our hcm solutions today uh, and we that's what we provide here at workday great so a lot more to get into here uh, but we're going to take a quick break i'm your moderator nicola grisco for the panel discussion hr modernization strategies in government sponsored by workday on federal news network we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> 